Field Nation, and thank you for joining us. Today is Friday, October 22nd. I'm Landry Long. And I'm Press Nickerson. Last week, an armed Haitian gang kidnapped and held hostage a group of American and Canadian missionaries, five who were children, one as young as eight months old. The gang demanded $17 million in exchange for the safety of the hostages. The FBI has coordinated with the Haitian government in an effort to get the group home safely. Citizens, citizens of Port-au-Prince, Haiti's capital city, protested the nation's uncontrollable violence and devastatingly unstable economy. Gangs in Haiti have become more powerful and are overtaking hospitals, streets, and neighborhoods, which makes living there even more dangerous for Haitian citizens. Wednesday morning, the FBI received a new lead in the Brian Laundry case. The FBI Office of Tampa said, quote, Items of interest were found at the Carlton Reserve Wednesday morning. <clears throat> An FBI evidence response team is examining the backpack and the notebook that were found, and the active crime scene is blocked off from the public. Both of these items were in the same area as human body parts that dental records confirmed to be from Laundry. The cause of death for the 23-year-old is still unknown and could take several weeks to determine. One month ago, senior PHS cheerleader Michaela Noble was involved in a tumbling accident that resulted in a devastating spinal injury, causing temporary paralysis from the chest down. A GoFundMe was helped set up to support Michaela's recovery process and her family, has gained a significant amount of attention and financial contributions from all over the world. Other prosperous students, such as Avery Shannon, have taken steps to raise even more money. So Shannon hosts a children's camp every month that allows parents a night out this month's camp's funds are being donated to Michaela and the Noble family to help with hospital bills and overall health care expenses. This is yet another example of the Prosper community showing its love and support towards Mac and her ongoing fight. The SAT and ACT aid in college decisions to accept applicants. Preparing for these exams is beneficial to high school students as it can often increase their chances of administration. Alyssa Ventura provides additional information regarding the SAT ACT prep course at PHS. The SAT and ACT are essential exams students must take as part of the college application process. Both are time tests that measure high school students' college readiness and give scores that can be used to analyze college applicants. Studying for the SAT and ACT can be challenging for many students because they cover years worth of material that doesn't exactly allow students to employ their typical study habits prior to taking the test. To prepare for these exams, PHS offers an SAT-ACT test prep class that all students are eligible to take their junior or senior years. The class is one semester long and teaches key concepts that students will see when taking their exams. In the first quarter of the semester, the class focuses on strengthening student skills for the SAT, and in the second quarter, the course addresses skills needed for the ACT. At the beginning of each of those quarters, students take practice tests, and for the rest of the quarter, they complete related activities and assignments to help improve test-taking skills. I'm Melissa Ventura, reporting for Eagle Nation News. Even though Prosper Fall Sports are winding down, the Eagles are still notching wins and collegiate commitments. Diane Shaw is in the studio with your Game Time Sports update. Thanks, Landry. Last Friday, the volleyball team was not able to secure the win against Allen, falling short 15-7 in the fifth set. On Tuesday, however, the Lady Eagles were able to turn things around and earn the win against the McKinney Lions 25-14 in the third set. Diving over to swim, the Eagle senior All-American Lane White committed to Texas A&M University to continue his swim career. Congratulations to this student athlete for taking his skills to the collegiate level. Moving away from the pool to the fairways, the boys golf team had a successful run at the plantation tournament. Three teams entered for Prosper and left with first, third, and fifth overall. Junior Case Randall won the tournament, and Junior Michael Beals took second. Speaking of wins, Cross Country swept at the district meet, and the Eagles are moving on to regionals on Monday in Lubbock. The girls will be racing at 11.30, while the boys will tow the line at 12.10. In football news, the Eagles had a bye last week, coming off their first district win against McKinney, defeating the Lions 31-14. The Eagles are currently 1-2 in district and 4-3 overall for the season. The Eagles will take on Denton Braswell at Collins Athletic Complex tonight at 7. In pro news, on Sunday, the Dallas Cowboys continued to show that they are locked in this season after beating the six-time Super Bowl champion New England Patriots 35-29 in overtime. Quarterback Dak Prescott went 36 for 51 for 51 for 445 passing yards and three touchdowns, including the game-winning TD to CeeDee Lamb in overtime. The Cowboys have a bye this week and will travel to Minnesota to face off against the Vikings. In less positive Cowboys news, safety DeMonte Kazee was arrested and charged with a DWI. This was his first offense, so he was only charged with a Class B misdemeanor and has been released on bail. 
NBA season has kicked off and the Dallas Mavs did not walk away with a victory, falling short to the Atlanta Hawks 113-87. The Mavs will play again tomorrow against the Raptors at Scotiabank Arena in Toronto. Prosper Swim and Dive Team is continuing to build off of last year's success with a new energy and attitude. Heath Bishop highlights the team's growing achievements with a new head coach at the helm. Coming off of a strong 2020 season, Prosper Swim and Dive Team looks to continue upwards with a fresh start. Swim and Dive has dominated to start the year and is showing no signs of stopping, building off of last year's success with a coaching change and an influx of new talent. Even bright and early in the mornings, the team continues to have a new and energetic environment. Well, we have great leaders on our team under Lane White and Abby Griffith, who are the team captains. Yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of good role models coming in. It's like no one's going to be judging you, making fun of you. We're all here to support each other. Um, and we did have a coaching change, which I think most people are happy with. Uh, yeah, Coach Harrington's doing really good for us so far, pushing us. It's going good. New to Prosper, Coach Harrington spent her last seven years as the Plano East head swimming coach, where in her last season, she won Region 2 6A Boys Swimming Coach of the Year. The team is awesome. The staff and administration are very supportive. Um, I've made a lot of friends and the team is swimming really, really well. The team gets really hyped up for meets. They have a ton of energy, um, not just at meets, but in practice. So it just makes uh, being around the pool and being around the team a lot more fun for everyone. I think the energy is what makes Prosper High School so different than the other schools that I've coached at. Our team just shows up for practice, ready to go every day. Um, they love being around each other. They love being in the water. I think they just love winning, and, and we've been doing a lot of that so far this season. Coach Harrington hopes the team can keep up with the positive attitude and continue to dominate the rest of the season. I'm Heath Bishop, reporting for ENN. After this short break, Madeline Wentz gives an update on the world of film and additional Hollywood happenings. The National Technical Honor Society is kicking off for the 2021 to 2022 school year with its first meeting on Monday, November 1st in room 1259, located in the CTE wing on the arena side of the building. If you are currently taking a CTE course, we invite you to complete the informational Google form that will be posted in your Google Classroom very soon. We will also have printouts with a QR code regarding the meeting up in all CTE classrooms next week. If you have any questions, please contact Mr. Jacobson or Mr. Claypool, who are the NTHS sponsors this year. We look forward to all CTE students being a part of NTHS and we hope to see you on Monday, November 1st. The entertainment world has been buzzing with anticipation for new movies and trailers that have finally arrived. Madeline Woods is in studio with this week's edition of Talent Talk. Thanks, Cross. Tragedy struck on the set of Western movie Rust yesterday when Alec Baldwin accidentally discharged a prop gun shooting two crew members. Director of photography Helena Hutchins was fatally shot and lead film director Joel Su currently recovering from his injuries at Christus St. Vincent Regional Medical Center in Santa Fe. Baldwin posted on Twitter this morning, voicing his shock, sadness, and support for Hutchins' family, as well as his cooperation with law enforcement, to thoroughly investigate the circumstances surrounding the incident. On a much lighter note, the new movie Dune, starring Zendaya, Timothy Chalamet, and Jason Momoa, hits theaters today. It is based off of Frank Herbert's popular science fiction book of the same name, published in 1965. Dune is expected to perform well at the box office and expand the audience of Herbert's fictional universe. Between Dune and Batman, Warner Brothers Studios has seen a busy week. DC released the Batman trailer last Saturday, with Robert Pattinson playing the Dark Knight alongside Zoe Kravitz, Colin Farrell, and Paul Dano. The film is set to open in theaters March 4, 2022. Another celebrity news, Kanye West's requested name change has been approved by Los Angeles judge on Monday. The rapper is now legally just Yee, citing religion as his inspiration for the new name, saying, quote, In the Bible, it means you. So I'm you, I'm us, it's us. The Junior World, Affair the Junior World Affairs Council is an organization that allows students to learn about leadership and other cultures. Nick Palme has more about this club and its impact on PHS. The Junior World Affairs Council, commonly known as JWAC, is an international organization set to allow students to become more conscious of global issues. JWAC, now a club at PHS, allows students to participate in globally focused activities such as career days, cultural events, social events, service projects, and an academic world quest, a test pertaining to the most relevant global issues that occurred during the current year. A lot of students come into us saying, I just don't know enough about what's going on in the world, and I would like to know what's going on currently and understand it a little bit better. The organization was created to help students become more aware of worldwide issues, to gain skills to solve complex problems, to compete in the global workforce, and to advance a shared respect for human dignity. 
there's always that few, there's a lot of people who were in JWAC uh, around the Dallas-Fort Worth area who've actually gone on to like careers in diplomacy, careers in writing about global issues, journalists. For more information about JWAC and how to get involved, check out dfwworld.org or contact the club sponsor, Miss Day. I'm Nick reporting for ENN. After this break, we take a closer look at a new, unique local business. Prosper Red Cross Club is up and running and now collecting a variety of household and clothing items to donate to the Salvation Army for local veterans. All donations can be placed in the two boxes by the main entrance of the school. The deadline for donations is Friday, October 29th by the end of the school day. As the once small town of Prosper grows and develops, more businesses continue to move in. And Lee Diaz highlights one particular business set to open its doors soon. With the town's continued expansion, Prosper welcomes a new store, Buff City Soap, that will open next month, located in the gates of Prosper on the Hobby Lobby side of Preston Road. Natalie Eimhoff, the owner of the new Prosper and Salina location, said that there are a variety of aspects of this company that makes it unique in comparison to other soap stores. So Buff City has an array of products, and they're all fantastic, handmade daily here at our soap makery. So we make everything from bars of soap, body butters, bath truffles, bath bombs, shower oils, and laundry soap. Buff City Soap sells various products that are specific to individual store locations as well as the top products popular at all of its stores. Some of the most popular items is our laundry soap. People go crazy for our laundry soap and it makes your clothes smell wonderful all while cleaning it at the same time. With the opening of the Prosper location, Buff City Soap will also be releasing a new line of soap called Max Warriors. All proceeds will go directly to the Noble family to support Michaela in her fight. Buff City Soap will open its stores in Prosper on Saturday, November 6th. I'm Emily Diaz, reporting for Eagle Nation News. Eagle Nation Online is a student-run media outlet at PHS. K Spears takes a closer look at the responsibilities of the organization and the students who bring the news on a daily basis. Eagle Nation Online, more commonly known as ENO, is the student-run web-based newspaper at PHS that allows students to learn basics of running a website and sharing articles regarding different topics that are relevant to PHS students. Students in the class are able to take on responsibilities of reporters finding different activities and newsworthy events around Prosper High School, and then turning the information they gather into interesting articles for their peers in the Prosper community to read. Senior Amanda Hare, Eagle Nation Online Editor-in-Chief, said that being a part of ENO has provided a comfortable learning environment and a great high school experience for her. Being a part of ENO has just really given me, like, just a place to be home at at school. Like it's helped me um, grow in journalism and it's encouraged my passion for it. And it's also just given me the chance to just talk to a bunch of different people as I interview them and write about them. Eagle Nation Online has also won numerous awards, including some from the TAJE Fall Fiesta last weekend. Students traveled to San Antonio and competed in multiple competitions over the course of three days. ENO placed second place in Best of Show for the competition and also won new multiple individual awards to add to their growing collection. You can access Eagle Nation Online at eaglenationonline.com and follow ENO on Twitter and Instagram at ENO underscore PHS. Reporting for Eagle Nation News, I'm Case Spears. That's all we have for you today, Eagle Nation. I'm Cross Nickerson. And I'm Landry Long. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.